Welcome to another video about Vue.js and Vuex. This video is a part of a series where we started at a basic project not using Vuex at all and we improved this project by adding getters and mutations and the central story at the beginning. And now we've gone pretty far, but there is one big limitation of this project right now, or one possible limitation I should say. If we had any async code being executed as part of a mutation, that won't work. Mutations always have to run synchronously. And it makes sense because mutations are the methods directly manipulating your store. So it would be kind of bad if they had some async nature to them, because that would mean that when you commit a mutation, it might not run immediately. So if you then get the value thereafter, it might not have changed yet. So therefore it makes sense that mutations have to run synchronously, but what if you have, let's say, some HTTP call which gets you a value which you then want to use in your commit. How would you handle this? Because with mutations as we use it right now, that is simply not possible or not possible inside of your store at least. So how could you change this? The answer is actions. And in this video, we will learn what actions are and how we use them and how we can combine them with asynchronous code. Let's start by setting up an action. I do this in the store.js files in my store. And I already added the state, getters and mutations. I guess you can guess how I do add actions. I add a new property named actions and this also is an object. Here I choose any name for the action and I will name it register. And oftentimes you will have the same name for the action and the mutation because the action is kind of a middleman running before you actually commit the mutation. Here, the action also gets an argument and this argument actually is the context of this action. Now the name is of course up to you, the name you assign to this argument, but it will be the context. And context is almost the same as the store but not completely the same, therefore it's a different name. Now on this context, we can simply run the commit method, because as I said, it's pretty much the same as the store, but not entirely. Technically it's a different object, but it does have a, have a commit method. And therefore here I can commit the register method, excuse me, the register mutation. Now, of course, like a mutation, the action can also receive a payload. So either a payload object, like in the unregister approach here, or the value itself, so user ID here. And then I can also pass this as a second argument to the commit method, because somehow I need to get that value to the mutation. Now, with that action set up, I can go to my registration.view file, where I right now directly commit the mutation. And here I can now instead call this store this patch. So like the mutation, I'm not calling actions and then executing the action itself. Instead, no, we have the dispatch method. And this means I dispatch the action, surprisingly. Here, I do need to pass the name of the action, which is register. And then as a second argument, the payload, user ID, or alternatively, like with a mutation in the registrations.view file, we could also dispatch it with one single object where you have the type as a set property and then any other amount of properties you want to use. In this case, though, you need to make sure that here you're getting the payload in general and you access your values like we do it here on the unregistered mutation. If I totally lost you now, have a look at the last video in the series. There I do explain this approach of passing a payload. Back to the action though. We're dispatching it and with that I'd say, let's see this in action. Well, it looks good. The app behaves exactly like before. So what did we gain by using an action here? Well, what we gained is right now, nothing, but now we can execute async code here. Because as I mentioned in the beginning, inside of a mutation, so inside of these methods here, you can't run asynchronous code. You always have to manipulate your state in a synchronous manner. But here in the action, before you actually commit it, you can run asynchronous code. And yes, of course, you would have been able to run that simply in your component before committing 
But then again, you would have that mixture of having some logic in your components and some logic in your store. You really want to have all the store and state related logic in your store though. Therefore, I run the action here or the code. Now let's simulate some async action by simply setting a timer over, let's say, one second. And after that second is over, then we will com commit this like that. Now with this approach, if we have a look and I now click register, you see, it took a second before it actually happened. Unregistering happens instantly though, because it didn't set a timer there. So with that, you see the difference. Here we can and we are allowed to run asynchronous code and mutations we are not allowed to. Now one additional load note, since we are mostly only interested in the commit method here, you don't have to get the full context object. You can also use another ES6 feature called deconstruction, where you simply use this syntax here, curly braces and then any name you choose to simply extract and then the name of the property you want to extract to directly extract that property from the object you're getting as an argument, throwing away the other properties. That is something you have to keep in mind. But if you don't need them, that's okay. And with that, you can leave out the context thing and directly get the commit method in this case. So this is an action here, running some async code. Now, since we dispatch our action here in the registration.view file, we have the same behavior as before. With that, we finished our Vuex implementation using the state in our central store, using getters to get the state or get some values depending on that state, using mutations to change the state and using actions to trigger mutations, possibly after running some async code before doing so. These are all great things and with that I hope you got a solid understanding of how Vuex works, why you might want to use it and how you could use it. Here I got a little graph showing the whole flow of actions and of values and it's basically just the thing we built throughout the last videos. But with that and the videos it hopefully is crystal clear how you can use Vuex, how state travels and how values travel through your application and why it might be beneficial. Now I got one more video in this series and in this last video I will show you some additional tricks or additional things about Vuex. See you there. Bye.